Hello there folks and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. It's lovely to see you again and I hope that I find you very well indeed. So tonight for tea we had these wonderful corned beef pasties. These were so tasty and let me tell you, so easy to make as well. This recipe is going to be enough to give you eight pasties but if you don't need as many as that you can just half the recipe. So I'm just going to show you what I used but as usual all of the ingredients along with their quantities will be in the description box underneath the video just in case you want to write everything down. Saves you watching the whole video again. So I've got some potatoes there and also some corned beef. I've got some diced carrots, frozen peas, a wee teaspoon of garlic, a tablespoon of fresh parsley, but you can use the stuff in the jar if you don't have any, and then some onion. This is my corned beef here. This is just a standard can of corned beef, you know, any brand that you prefer. So just chop that into chunks because that's going to make it easier to mix through at the end. This is the puff pastry that I'm using here. I'm going to use two sheets of this, but if you prefer, you can use short crust pastry or if you're good at making your own pastry and you've got a fortnight to make it, go ahead and make your own. So go over to your cooker and you want a nice big frying pan. To that, I'm going to add some oil. I'm using olive oil, but use whatever oil you prefer. And these are my tatties here. I'm using the wee baby potatoes, which I've just cubed up. You know, keep the skin on because this is going to help retain the texture of your potatoes you know it's just a texture thing you don't want them all mushing up and disappearing so this is absolutely perfect so pop them into your hot oil and then we're going to add your carrots in again just peeled and diced roughly the same size as your potatoes just so that they cook roughly at the same time give those a wee stir and you want to cook these for about five to eight minutes just so that they soften up a good bit after the five or eight minutes if yours aren't really softening up yet just give them another couple of minutes and then when you're ready push those out of the way and then pop your onion in this is just half an onion i finely diced and then you can just mix everything together. And you just want to give this another two or three minutes again, just for the onion to soften up. Now to that, we're going to add one teaspoon of minced garlic. This is just the garlic in the jar. But if you've got fresh garlic, use that if you prefer. I'm going to put in a wee dash of salt and also some white pepper as well. This is just to taste, so probably about half teaspoon of each and just give that a good stir around. Again, give this about a minute just for the flavour of your garlic to come out. Push that out of the way again and then we're going to go in with the frozen peas just straight from the freezer. Pop those into your pan and give those a good stir around again just to make sure everything is well combined. Give that a minute just for the peas to warm through and then we're going to pop in the fresh parsley. But if you don't have fresh parsley, the dried parsley from the jar is absolutely fine. And again, just give this a wee stir around just to make sure everything is well combined and give this about another minute again just for everything to mingle and warm through. So push that out of the way and the last thing we're going to do is pop in your corned beef. Like I said, do make sure it's chopped up and that will make it easier to break up with your spoon and just warm it through and it will get nice and soft after a couple of minutes like this. And then you can just stir your vegetables through the corned beef and that's you more or less done. How easy was that? And you know, if you don't want to do pasties, you could just do the one big pie, you know, it makes a lovely pie filling. So that's you done. So just set that to the side and let that cool whilst you're, you know, whilst you're cutting out your pastry. So like I said, I am going to make eight of these. You can use a big cookie cutter if you've got one. I'm actually going to draw around a plate with a knife and my plate is about four inches in diameter, but you use whatever you prefer. You can make these any size you like. You can make two massive ones if you prefer. Like I said, it's completely down to you, but I did want eight of these so I'm using two sheets of this ready rolled pastry again the brand is completely up to you this one I think was from Lidl but in my opinion the best pastry the best you know shop bought pastry is actually from Aldi and it's absolutely wonderful their puff pastry you know it's absolutely foolproof so just go around your template and cut out as many as you like this will depend on how many you're making obviously and then you'll be left with something like this. So you will need a baking tray lined with greaseproof paper. You'll also need one egg yolk so you can keep the egg white for something else. We're just looking for the yolk for this one. Give it a wee stir 
just to break it up. Then grab your discs of pastry. You want to use the sticky side. One of the sides will be stickier. The side that was in contact with the roll of your baking paper will be slightly stickier. Make sure that's facing up the way because it's going to make it easier to close at the end. So just pop your filling in. I would say no more than a couple of tablespoons because you do want to be able to close these and not overstuff them. So just grab your edges and gently press them together like this and because we're using the sticky side you don't have to you know brush egg or anything on they will stick together quite easily so just keep repeating that for the remainder of your discs i'm just going to do two just for demonstration purposes and i will be doing the rest of mine later on otherwise this video would be a two hour long video instead of an eight minute video <laughs> so just pinch all of your sides together do it nice and slowly because you don't want to burst your pastry and have everything leaking out and they look like wee stegosauruses in my opinion and if you want to crimp the top you know just do it as i'm doing here it's really really easy just push your knuckle into the wee dent there and it's so easy to do but unfortunately it won't hold this shape it'll end up looking more like a chicken breast at the end of the cooking time <laughs> but it doesn't matter it would have been fab if they would have stayed like this but alas they did not so you want to pop these into the fridge for about half an hour to get nice and stiff for your pastry to get nice and stiff and then get them back out after your half an hour and you want to brush these really well with that egg yolk do give them a nice even coating Take the time just to do it properly because this will give you a lovely brown glossy appearance all over so this is ideal then all you have to do now is pop these into the middle of your oven for about 25 minutes or gas mark 5 or 190 c and they will come out looking something like this now if you're pasties are getting too brown on the top and your pastry underneath isn't quite cooked yet just cover them in foil so that the brown you know the tops don't brown too much and that will prevent them going too dark but i was really happy with these like i said really disappointed they didn't hold their shape in the oven mr what's for tea said they look like chicken fillets and they actually do look a bit like chicken breasts sorry I'm just going to pull one open just to let you see what they're like inside and they were so tasty. Now we would typically have chips with something like this but I had some potato croquettes there so we just had a couple of potato croquettes on the side and of course we've got to have baked beans with anything with pastry as you'll know by now. These are just the Aldi baked beans. I think the brand is Coral or Coral, something like that but whatever brand you prefer but definitely recommend baked beans with them. So thank you very much for watching if you're leaving at this point and a huge thank you to the supporters of the channel over my Patreon page, to the channel members here on YouTube as well and for you all for watching and leaving your lovely comments and for those that share the videos as well it's all very much appreciated and hopefully I will catch up with you during the week for another wee recipe or even on Saturday for our wee shopping haul or even back on Sunday for our meals of the week but whenever you choose to join me again have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you off as soon back here on What's For Tea. Bye now.